Just a quick little vlog. Somebody emailed me recently and said, you know, I'm feeling a little stressed out about learning how to code. It's difficult. It seems like a very daunting task. Well, there's a reason why coders and developers make big money because that initial hurdle, let me emphasize that, it's just an initial hurdle. Once you get past that, which a lot of people don't, but once you get past that, then it's smooth sailing. Trust me, trust me. Remember, Anything that's worthwhile, worthwhile is not going to be necessarily easy at first, but that's the irony. You just got to get past the basics. Once you get past the basics, and that's just the first little while, then all of a sudden you're going to find that the amount of work required to uh, get anything done, the amount of work, the amount of difficulty that you're going to have learning how to code is just going to diminish quite a bit. It's going to become much, much easier. Remember, it's always hardest in the beginning, so don't give up. All right, that's it for now. Hey guys, so somebody asking me a question about uh, career paths, technology, education, uh, web development, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna go through his email as I think it's gonna be interesting for a lot of you guys and I'll just comment along the way. And yes, I'm going to be shilling as well. So mm -hmm. that's what I do. All right, so reading from this email. I also just want to say thank you. I watch countless videos on YouTube. I've taken courses in college on PHP, SQL, C++, and to be honest, the teaching methods suck. You explain the concepts and break things down in a way that I understand. Thank you. Thank you for that. I discovered your videos by just Googling best sites on learning Python. You were one of the first searches. So he gives me a bit of a background. He says uh, he has uh, he graduated with a comp sci degree. It was a, a very hands-on school of instructors who uh, do have jobs during the day as they teach on the side. I can't say I've been completely unlucky, unlucky in finding good jobs. I found some, but they usually contract only or contract to hire. I, know, I almost never get hired permanently. I have tried to really specialize in any one particular thing. I haven't tried to specialize in any particular thing. I have gotten a few certs, network, CC, ENT. My concentration was in network security in school, but it's super tough to get a job that lasts. Yeah, I can see that network security. It's getting more and more secure. Once you set up a system, why do they need you? They, they just need part-time consultants for that at best, right? He continues, I've gotten roles that pay 35 to 40 an hour, which which adds up to 70 to 80K a year. As a level three IT specialist, it will go three to six months, maybe a year, and then they don't want to give me a decent raise or I'm laid off. Uh, they don't need me anymore, yeah, exactly. So let me continue. My other issue is the skill requirements for getting a job as a sysadmin or network admin require you to be skilled in more than one thing. Welcome to the world of the technology specialist. Um, they want you to know storage, Linux, visualization, cloud, scripting, PowerShell, and Bash, how to manage O365 networking, all for an amazing salary of 65 to 80K, contract to hire. Oh, they want you to have five, 10 years experience. So this guy's got a bunch of debt, 70K in debt. He would love to learn all, of the, all those things, but he needs to stay employed enough to afford the exams for all of those certs. Yeah, cert certifications can get very, very expensive. I'm going to be solving that soon, by the way. Anyway, so he says, I like this honesty here. My motivation is money and to feel important and feel good about what I'm doing and to have the option of working remotely. So yeah, that's, uh, so basically he wants to make a lot of money. He wants to feel like he's doing something worthwhile, good work, and he wants freedom ability to work remotely, he wants freedom. Can you give me some advice on the route I should take from here in the world of coding? I'm done with office politics and that culture. At least I want it to be done. I want to get into web development, but I always, but I always was afraid of learning the learning curve and that I wouldn't be good enough. I want to try my hand at creating mobile apps as well for Android and iOS. I want to do everything. I want to learn some back-end oh, stuff too. Maybe I'm crazy, but I'm afraid of not knowing enough and not being marketable. Lack of steady employment cash flow will do that to you, I guess. 
Indeed it will. So uh, number one, we can solve this problem. So first thing, watch my video on FU stash. Once you establish FU stash, then you 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 can dance dance around with any without any cares. It's very 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 liberating to have FU cash. So, but before you can get FU cash, you need to develop some skills and to get the money flowing in so that you can then save the FU cash. So, yes, if you want a lot of money, you want to feel good about the type of work that you do and you want the option to work remotely and more importantly the option to work when you want, how you want, with whom you want and the types of projects you want, then web development is the key. Now, there's a lot of money in all kinds of development, but web development gives you that maximum flexibility. If you want to work on your own as a freelancer, web development. If you want to go work for a corporation, web development. If you want to develop mobile apps for iOS or Android, guess what? Web development, right? If you want to go work for medium-sized companies, you want to do contract work for six months, web development. My suggestion to you, and I realize this is a big fear for a lot of people, it's been alien to me because I've been in business my entire life. Freelancing will give you the ultimate flexibility, the ultimate ability in terms of how much money you can make. It's a great type of business to get into, especially for your first business, because freelancing is immediate. You just can have minimal skills, and meaning a few months of training, and you can start doing what I would call low-level freelancing basic WordPress installations, uh, setting up people's host sites and domain names, uh, adding their a little bit of PayPal integration, uh, setting up their social strategy, a web professional. Now, when you are starting out as a freelancer, as I have said, like any other business, there is a lag time before it starts to pick up. But once it picks up, once it gets to the point where it's making money and you have a steady, stable uh, flow of contracts coming in from a stable of clients, then um, then you're off to the races, yada, 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 Bob's your uncle. One of the things you have to understand about uh, being in business is that for most countries, and I don't know where you are, but you can check the local laws, ask a local bookkeeper, accountant, do some research online. Most countries in the world, the smart countries, they give huge tax advantages to business owners and small business owners. Why? Because small business drives the economy, creates jobs, it creates a tax base for uh, for uh, governments. But it is da a daunting task for people because it's a kind of a black box for people. People don't understand business. They don't understand how to get into it. And they make a lot of, I've seen it many times over the last, uh, I hate to say it, almost three decades now. People make a lot of noob, actually it is three decades, they make a lot of noob moves, a lot of rookie mistakes, unforced errors, if you will. And if you just learn to avoid some of these basic errors, like chasing after huge clients when you're a small company, that's the worst thing you can do for many reasons I've discussed. Uh, another big mistake, having too few clients. Better have many small clients than a few big clients. I could go on and on and on. But, uh, and I have in my entrepreneur and my freelance courses, anyway. So yeah, so, you have a guy here who's got some skill. I think you got some experience. Um, you just got to, and he sees in terms of the work, he says, versus being a network guy, he says there's a lot more money just to get into software development, full stack developer. And as I said, if you do the web development, that opens up the possibility of doing hybrid apps as well, web apps, or doing PWAs, which are growing more and more and more in popularity. I've talked about P PWAs in the past. PWAs, progressive web apps, it's kind of like a responsive website on steroids because the modern web browsers uh, have a lot of capabilities in terms of what the, you can do. You can have something called local storage, so you can have your web app actually save information to the person's uh, local computer or smartphone. And there's all kinds of things beyond that as well. So the, um, the differences between native development with iOS Swift, Android with Java or Kotlin, versus using web technology to build mobile apps, that the differences 
are really, you know, diminishing quite a bit. And for, I would argue, 99% of uh, mobile applications out there, you can do it to PWA. And some huge players are doing PWA now. Instagram is PWA. Some Google properties are PWA. Um, I think Uber is PWA. So, you know, PWA is, is, a, is a viable option for mobile. Anyway, off on a tangent. Yeah, again, somewhat to my surprise, after all these years, the web stack is still dominating and in fact is becoming more important as a development platform. So if you're looking for maximum freedom and flexibility in terms of your career, maximum potential to make a lot of money, um, you want to avoid the corporate lifestyle, the corporate uh, grind, if you will, then uh, the web is the way to go. There's no question about that. I hope that helps. Bye-bye.